build communities of like-minded people and diminish the almighty sense of ego. And psilocybin does this very effectively in two ways. First of all, it dissolves boundaries between people. And another way of saying ego is that I strongly distinguish between you and me, you know? That's what ego tells you, is who you are and how important you are and how you're not her or him or that or that, you're this. Psilocybin tends to dissolve that language-reinforced misperception. And the other thing it does is it shows you that behind your eyebrows is a world richer by far than any of the crap that's being peddled on Rodeo Drive or Fifth Avenue in New York City or anywhere else. In other words, it shows you the pathetic nature of materialism by reintroducing you to the reality of the spirit. Not as a religious abstraction that's used to beat you over the head to follow somebody's moral recipe, but as a felt experience of the indwelling of an extreme power. That a power that connects you to all the life of the past on this planet, to the planetary future, to the universe at large. So really, it's a rediscovery of our birthright as human beings. History is a bad deal. It's a, it's a mass of pottage. It's broken machines and broken dreams because we have projected our value system out into matter and matter has not responded in a satisfying way and so we're then dysfunctionally neurotic, always seeking, never finding. See, what the psychedelic is going to do is it's going to destroy your whole world, your whole conception of your world. And some people, that's tremendously liberating. They say, wonderful, at last I'm free of it. Other people say, my God, now I'm hopelessly mad. I have nothing left to cling to. I've really done it this time. And, and so that, that's almost a, an aesthetic judgment, whether you like watching your world shredded before your eyes and made into nonsense, uh, if that makes you feel liberated and secure, then you can sign up for this carnival. If that alarms you, I think best to stick to the tribe and true. It's uh, not for people of weak psychic constitution. And what shamanism is about is, I mean, I know someone who says of the mushrooms, my goal with taking mushrooms is always to be able to stand more. And, and they don't mean higher doses, they mean more of what it reveals. And I feel like that. I mean, the mushroom speaks. I didn't really stress this in my talk, but the strange, the confounding fact about these mushrooms is that they speak to you in plain English. And this is uh, completely unexpected. How can such a thing be? I mean, one is dumbfounded in the presence of this. And, and yet, uh, by being able to have an I-thou relationship to this thing, you open up yourself to uh, what is essentially a magical dimension, a dimension of allyship uh, with this thing. I come to this completely as a rationalist. I mean, I am. Uh, more scientist, more rationalist than anything else. I am very uncomfortable with my position in the new age. I hate all that stuff. The quartz crystal suppositories and the channeling of dead Egyptians and all this horrible stuff which goes on. I mean, it's just an affront to the thinking mind. But when I encountered these psychedelics, I said, my God, skepticism is the proper path. And, and I believe this. It's, and it's not to believe, it's to test. I said to the mushroom once, why us? Meaning my brother and me, why us? And it said, 
because you don't believe in anything. You know, you're not a believer. And so it's, it's a real thing. It's a real mystery. It will not yield to reason. It's a tremendously well-kept secret. This is why the psychedelic experience and psychedelics are so important. It's because they are tools for understanding and revisioning the reality in which we all live. The personal growth is a wonderful thing and will naturally follow along. But it's more important than that. It's a way to make a new world that is Taoistic, feminine, free of anxiety, and in great anticipation of further stages of completion lying into the future. That's, uh, that's where the mystery, the transcendental object, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is waiting. And I think that's the job of each of us, to show our best toys and our best tricks that lift us and our friends to higher and higher levels. And there is no end to this bootstrapping process. The, the future of the human mind and body and the future of humans together is uh, endlessly bright. We are not an army. So our strategy must be stealth. It's an alchemical strategy. And what do I mean by stealth? I mean uh, the house of constipated reason must be infiltrated by art, by dreamers, by vision. And what is new is that there are massive technologies available to us, not available in the 60s. They were not designed for us. They were not intended for us. It was never ever thought that such power should flow into the hands of freaks such as ourselves. Nevertheless, through the perverse nature of the unfolding of the world, uh, we have such tools. And I'm referring, uh, as you probably anticipate, uh, the internet. Find the others. Find the others. And then you will know what to do. You don't have to stick a flower in your hair and go to San Francisco. Uh, you just uh, go to the web. Find the others. We all need to create affinity groups. Keep the faith. Recognize each other. And... Uh... Maybe I should close with a little line from Gary Snyder, if I can remember it. He said, uh, learn the flowers, travel light, stay together. <laughs> <laughs>